Surgeons making life and death decisions in real time are no longer operating on their own. They now have an AI safety net. Dr. Matthew Tollefson, a Mayo Clinic urologist, is one of hundreds of doctors at over a dozen hospitals across the country using what startup Theater calls its surgical intelligence in the operating room. The most fascinating part of this is we get this information in real time. Theater, which has raised over $42 million from the Mayo Clinic and VCs, advises doctors starting with pre-op decisions about techniques. Then it records surgeries, comparing the video to previous similar procedures to identify which decisions yield the best outcomes. We're enabling pattern recognition at, uh, at a scale that's never been seen before, learning from that in order to be able to inform you know, surgeons moving forward on the best approach to a certain situation. Dr. Tolufson says reviewing and analyzing surgery videos can sometimes take surgeons months, but this AI helps them instantly jump to key moments. We can perhaps predict things like if I make an incision here, this could potentially mean something else for a patient. It could predict a complication. It could pre predict maybe cancer recurrence or some things that are really critical to how we do surgery. AI isn't just being used in the operating room, but also by emergency responders. Okay, he is he unconscious? Uh, evidently, yeah, I can't get any response. Okay. AI-powered Corti focuses on emergency medicine. It listens in on calls, analyzing voice and background noises, alerting medical professionals about any help the caller might need, like if a person is having a heart attack. It equips nurses and paramedics with real-time suggestions. But like in any new technology, there are risks. And in healthcare, patient confidentiality is always a top concern. And that has been a big focus for companies applying AI in the medical space. But many doctors see the upside from AI as massive. Frankly, I think most of these major obstacles are really addressed. And I think um, the sky is really the limit for where this technology can go. Julia joins me now. Well, Kelly, what's so interesting about this technology is it's not just surgeons and paramedics. We're increasingly seeing AI's value in detecting cancer or developing drugs far faster and more efficiently than ever before. And this is notable how different this type of use of AI is with a fixed data set deployed by professionals very different from the likes of chatbots, which are trained on the entirety of the Internet, and they've also raised plenty of concerns about misleading consumers. No, it definitely feels like the, the really interesting phase of this will be when corporations can use all of their proprietary data and chat with it. I mean, think about all the data we have here at CNBC, right? To, be, to have that chat-like capability will be phenomenal. Well, yes, because I think what we're really talking about here is deploying AI with a fixed data set and adding some of those conversational capabilities that we have seen and enjoyed so much interacting with with the likes of ChatGBT. But if you think back of what we heard in the testimony from Sam Altman on Capitol Hill earlier this week, all of the concerns were about misleading consumers, right? And what is the consumer experience here? How could consumers be taken advantage of? Could it impact voting and elections? But if you're looking at AI's use in, by, by the enterprise, it's a very different use case and so much potential to make use of all that data. We've talked about data mining. This is data synthesis and action based on that data. To the debate the market's having about how much it'll increase profits or productivity, does this example offer us any insight? Absolutely. I mean, what you're talking about is surgeons not only perhaps being able to make better choices, but being able to continue to train the AI machine to get smarter and smarter and smarter. And so it's not like you could have one surgeon doing more surgeries, but you could make the one surgeon as smart as a surgeon with a lot more experience. So it's really leveling up people and giving them the expertise of all those who've come before or them. Or maybe then you pay for a, a lesser trained surgeon because you can overlay that with your you know, proprietary technology. And that, that is one way of reducing costs or increasing I mean, you're going to still want people, you know, I, I don't I, like, I hesitate to propose myself. this. I'd want the more experienced <laughs> surgeon. But I do think it's really interesting to think about what the, the positive benefits are. And if you can address concerns about HIPAA compliance compliance and about the safety of personal data, you know, I would want a surgeon to have access to the entirety of a history of surgeries about something very similar. Yeah. Um, or a paramedic, you want them to be able to have instantaneous access um, to information that could save lives. Yeah, no, I see Andreessen Horowitz today saying the next thing we need to build is better health care. And I'm like, great, bring it on. It's time to do this. Julia, thank you for now. Thank I'm Julia you. Borston.